On a night best summarized by the phrase, enough is enough, as it applies to Igor Shesterkin for sure, but also as it applies to his team doing just enough to win in overtime. 4-3 the final in Chicago, Rangers over the Blackhawks. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios alongside Steve Aliquet. I'm John Giannone. Rangers get the two points, but... Maybe that's not the point the way they ended up getting it, right? Winning in overtime on Amika Zibanejad goal midway through. You're just not leaving this game with that feeling like it was a win. It's not that giddy emotion that you leave Chicago with that makes you feel really good about your effort and how the game went. You got outshot 12-4 in the third period, which is a head scratcher, but... You get it together because you have more skill than Chicago in overtime, and you see that nice shot from Kreider, a breakaway from Lafreniere, and you keep pushing. And Mika needed this. Mika needed this. Make no mistake about it. Starts with a good hit in their own zone. Hard for the Chicago Dickinson to get off the ice. And then what happens for me here is that you've got a three-on-two with a lot of time and space. And that's very difficult math for the goaltender. When there's a lot of time and space, you have options and you can deceive both defenders as well as the goalie into not being able to have any backwards motion. That's why Mrazic gets stuck and he has to push across the crease without any flow backwards. He's laid across, make a, makes a great shot, make no mistake about it. But you're also playing against a team that, if you just look at their record and schedule over the last month and a bit here, Chicago's beaten the Calgary Flames and the New York Islanders, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, this is... This is not a good hockey club. So you're not happy about the killer instinct after this game. That's why you're not happy. You're leaving the building, and I think that it's still something that this team has to shake, which is have a killer instinct in this game. It's 3-1. It's over. You don't need any more goals. Shut it down. Lock it down defensively. And then counter. Play against Chicago the way that... You have to play in the playoffs. I know this is not a playoff matchup. You can still learn some things. Mm -hmm. And I think the one thing the Rangers have to learn about themselves is when they get up in a playoff series, up in a game, learn to just stop taking your foot off the gas and learn how to have a killer instinct and, and finish teams off. And you know how you know that the Rangers probably feel exactly the same way you do? There wasn't any jumping up and down on the ice when Zibanejad scored. Arms went up. We saw Adam Fox at the side of the net, arm up. Relief. There were pats on the head, but yeah. they were probably still pretty ticked off at the way this game ended when you consider two goals against in the final six and a half minutes turned it from 3-1 to 3-3, which then turns our conversation to the goaltender. Right. Because now there's Igor Shesterkin in his first game as a Ranger in two weeks, hadn't won in almost three weeks, and he's staring at a two-goal lead with six and a half minutes left and suddenly he finds himself in overtime. So imagine, look, I didn't love this start for him as far as the schedule of it. It was just tough timing for him. You're going through a really tough time, you're struggling, and you're playing against a team that you're expected to win. It's a no-win scenario for him. You win, you're expected to, you don't win, then what? And it's, it's, he was in a no-win situation. However, um, besides the fact the second shot of the game goes in, to me, if you didn't know that he was struggling, you wouldn't know that he was struggling. Hmm. He was okay in this game, he was fine. If it was regular Igor, you'd just leave this game and say, okay, it was just another game. You know, park it. But that's not the case. Now it still has a bit of a dark cloud over him and what happens next and the narrative, et cetera, because it wasn't a shutout. So then how does he emerge from this game mentally? He got the win, but... Well, you know what it is, you escaped, you know, you didn't, you didn't get embarrassed, but you're not feeling good about it. Igor doesn't want, I'm telling you right now, Igor is not happy that three pucks went by him under any circumstance. He's too elite when he's at his best to be okay with three goals against. Now, does he play Monday? That's, that's where I'm already thinking because what's best for this guy right now? And I would say you got to play him Monday now mm -hmm. because you didn't learn anything from this game. And he's trying to figure it out. And you know that, here's the thing, I looked over this today. You're going to use two goalies in the Stanley Cup playoffs. That's just what's happening right now. You look at Vegas last year, Brassois had eight starts. The year before that, Francois had four starts. Washington Grubauer played the first game of the playoffs in 2018 before uh, Holpe took over. So you see this a lot now, and I don't think it's a big deal of, 
you got two goalies that are, you know, look, Quick's playing great, mm -hmm. but you got two guys that are going to contribute that will have to be a piece of this if you're going to win a Stanley Cup, and that's all we're talking about. Right. We wouldn't be critical of this team if the bar wasn't so high. That's just the way it is right now, right. and they know it. Mm -hmm. They know it. That's why they're not happy with this game. It's not just a win. Igor Shesterkin gets his 20th win of the season, but he certainly gets bailed out by Mika Zibanejad, who scored for the first time in eight games, only the second time in the last 17 games. Here he is after the game reacting to the win with Dave Maloney. Well, Mika, walk us through the winner. Um, we, uh, we get a three on two. Um, and Cards makes an unbelievable play. Uh, freezes a goalie and the defender. And... Um, Try to get on that, and it went in, so I was uh, relieved. And then, uh, just uh, your, from your observation, how did the game get to that point? Uh, I, I thought we did an okay job in the first. Um, after they they get the lead, um, I think we're kind of. I mean, they they work hard. Uh, give them credit. Um, they're, they're fast and they work hard. I think there's a um, execution and, and uh, maybe. Um, slow decision making at times that, that put us in trouble and um, yeah it's it's not one of our it's not a great performance but at the end of the day um, it's easier to look at it and, and demand more from ourselves when we get the two points and, and uh, move on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you can find a way to look at it every time uh, we lose this game. We play or we play great. We lose games. Then it's not about the progress. It's not about our performance. Uh, it's about the result. When we don't play well and we win, um, it's about the performance. I understand that, but at the same time, hopefully in a month or so, we won't for remember this game in, in terms of how good it was. Just look at the schedule and get the two points from it. Um, but yeah, I agree. I mean, it's uh, obviously you want the performance to be be good, and, and we know we have to play better um, you know longer we get through the season and we want to build and we want to feel good about our game but um, yeah it's it's uh, right now it's it's two points relieved that we got the win and, and uh, we move on yeah I mean I, I think he uh, <sighs> the goals that that that, uh, that they score is, is uh, um, I mean they're some some really good shots and a tip and I think he's he played well tonight, and, and uh, we, uh, we 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 can do a better job of helping him out. What's your assessment of the power play right now? Uh, um, I don't know. It's it's. Um, I think it's it's a lot of overthinking. Um, we're talk about playing fast, but but I think it's it's just trying to find something, try to overdo it, try to overcompensate for what's going on right now. And, and uh, we talk about simplifying, and, and that's what we have to keep harping on and keep getting better at. And um, yeah, it's it's uh, obviously we want the power play to keep get going again. Thanks, Mika. Thank you, guys. Lots to digest from Mika Zibanejad after he scores the game winner. Uh, I thought one thing that really stood out was he said, uh, hopefully a month or so from now, we're not going to remember how good tonight was. Just remember that we got the yeah. win. It's almost like they don't want to take much out of tonight. Well, Mika's also trying to balance the difference between and the importance of process versus results. Yeah, you have to win, but you have to win the right way if you want to carry that into the postseason. You're coming off two great games, result-wise, and for the most part, process-wise, versus Colorado and Tampa Bay. You don't want this game to cancel out those two games. That's all you don't want. You don't want any carryover from this game. What the players did want, and I'm sure they intended to have, was those two games carry on into Chicago, breeze through this one, go back and play Cal uh, Calgary at home on Monday, and then on Thursday play Montreal. And you're, geez, you're running off the wins now because you have got a, we've got a winning streak. Mm -hmm. But this one's sort of a stopper, even though it's not a loss. It just feels like it. Yeah. You know, and, and you don't want to kill their mojo, but at the same time, he understands what that was. That's, that's, not, that's not a game they're proud of. Right. Important to note, though, the Rangers have now won four in a row, and they are now six ahead of the Carolina Hurricanes in the Metro. Carolina does have two games in hand.